um, I greet you again. And today we, we are in a time of our lives where people have actually gone down to the point of worshiping idols. And um, you see them everywhere where they are. We have got so many idols that are around. Some of them in human flesh, some of them in the things that are made by the hand of man. But some people will actually ask and say, can a modern man be involved in idolatry whilst thinking he is serving the true Elohim? The answer is affirmative. Now, if it is like that, how can then one be sure that one is worshiping the true Messiah without any shadow of doubt? Yes, first know the name of your Messiah because many false messiahs have emerged on the world scene. This is written in Matthew 24, 24. I just want us to look back uh, in history from the time of the prophet Elijah and his encounter with the prophets of Baal. Those were worshiping things that were created than the creator himself. And we carried on until the time of Yeshua. Now the question is, did they stop worshiping idols? Because right now we see there are so many churches and they say, no, we don't worship idols. But I've never seen a church which says, yes, we are worshiping idols. I am not talking about the, 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 the Islam or the Hindus. I am talking about the main stream religion, which is Christianity. We know that most of these that have come into the world, that are being worshipped, yet Yeshua told us the first thing that we need to understand is that we need to know the name. Because the name then tells the character of the person. The name, when you call it, you are calling the spirit that is associated with that name. For those who are from Africa, who are familiar with ancestral worship, worshiping, they will know the importance of the name, that they cannot call upon the ancestors using a nickname because those spirit will not react, but they will always react with the name that that spirit was given from the beginning. And now here, we, we have heard that Yeshua spoke in John 5 verse 43. He said, I have come in the name of my father and you did not receive me. If another comes in his own name, you will receive that one. Why would Yeshua emphasize the fact that he came in his father's name if a name is not important? We know if we come to Africa, there are so many countries that were under colonialism and all those countries when they 
achieve self-determination, they change the name. They spend billions to just change names. Is it that these people are doing something that we don't understand, or it is just a question of wasting money? We know those who are saying a, man, a name does not matter are the ones that actually changed the name of the Messiah and they gave another name. And those same characters are the ones that were beating our forefathers and our foremothers uh, and, have, and, and forcing them to take up names that were not their original names. Why would they do that? Why would they break a black man so that he can accept a name that is theirs? It's because they know the importance of a name. Right now in South Africa and in some parts of Africa, we are independent, so to speak, but none of those former colonizers, if there is any, who have adopted African names, who have given their children African names. Why, if a name does not matter? Why is it that those slave masters were beating up black people and forcing them to have names? Why did they go and change names of countries, of rivers? Even continent of Africa was changed. Why did they do that if there was nothing important about name? Now, my brothers, I want you to understand that there is so much importance in a name. There is a spirit that is associated with that name. We know the Messiah, when he was, he was born, Yahweh gave him a name. And his name was to save Yahweh's people. In Luke 2, verse 26 and 30, it is written, And by the Spirit he came into the sanctuary, and as the parents were bringing the child Yeshua, for them to do according to the custom of the Torah concerning him. Even Simeon received him into his arms and he said, Yahweh, and said, bless Yahweh, and said, now dismiss your servant in peace, Adonai, according to your word, because my eyes saw your salvation. Samuel, uh, Simeon called him your salvation to Abba Yah, which is Yahweh's salvation, Yahshua. Now it is only through the confession of this name that true salvation is founded. My brethren, we are saved by the Father through the Son. So the Father's name is very important when calling for salvation. It is written in Acts 4, verse 1 and uh, 1 to, to 2. I read, it says, And there is salvation in no other man, for ni neither is there any other name under heaven, having been given among men by which we must be saved. Being given among men, that's what the word says. Given by who? By Yahweh, of course. Brother Bradley, I want you to open uh, Joel 2, verse 32, and read it for us. This was in the Old Testament, which supported the New Testament. Can you read Joel 2, verse 32 for us? And those that changed the name had a problem of dealing with Joel. Because Joel is speaking the same as the New Testament. 
Joel 2, verse 32. Okay, Joel 2, verse 32 reads, And it shall come to pass, that whoever shall call on the name of Yahweh shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there shall be those that escape, as Yahweh has said, and among the remnant, those whom Yahweh does call. Joel. All that shall call upon the name of Yahweh shall be saved. It was in the Old Testament. It is again in the New Testament. For those that have got a different name, what name is in the Old Testament that they are calling today? And what name in the New Testament they are calling? You will find in their Bibles those two names are different. Because in their wisdom, they become foolish. They did not know how to change that. The lying pen of the scribes, Jeremiah 8 verse 8, we can see it from here. What name of salvation was given by the Father? Do you know the name you are calling for salvation or you are casting out demons under? Was it given by Abaya? or by a council of religious leaders sitting way back at the Council of Nicaea, instituted by the father of Christianity, Roman Emperor Caesar Flavius Constantine in AD 32. The name given by Abba Yah is documented. In Matthew 1, verse 20 to 21, it is written, and as he was thinking about those things, behold, a cherub of Yahweh was seen by him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Miriam as your wife, for that is her, that in her is generated by the Holy Spirit, and she will bear a son, and you shall call his name. Yahshua, for he shall save his people from their sin. Yahweh called his son Yahshua, Yahweh salvation. What do you call your savior? Is your confession of his name in line with the word of the Father? In Matthew 10, verse 3, it is written. Then everyone who shall confess me before men, I will confess him before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny him before the Father in heaven. By calling another name and not confessing him through his real name, it is not, it is not a thing that Yahweh expects us. Rather, it is a denial of the, of the Messiah. We are denying the Messiah by calling another name that was not the name of the Father. People have denied Yahweh's salvation because of theologians. Some of these theologians are coming to the deduction that the word of Yahweh is written in codes which needs decoding. Yet the word was written to be understood as it was by everyone through the set-apart spirit, be it lawyers like Paul, doctors like Luke, tax collectors like Matthew, and fishermen like Peter. All understood it without any decoding. So now, why do we need it to be decoded? E.g., why decoding a simple name, Yeshua, to something else? It does not make sense. There is the simple name, Yeshua, but they want to transliterate it. They want to change it. But when a Chinese president come to South Africa, they don't change, it, change him and give him a Zulu name so that the Zulu people can be able to call his name. 
they will still use that same name. Putin, when he comes, we still say Putin, even when we don't understand what it means, but we'll still say Putin because that is his name. We don't even go around and sit around a conference center on a conference table and we say, uh, now we need to transliterate the name so that it will be easy for those who speak English, for, for those who speak Greek, for those who speak I I Italian. No, it is because they were actually sharing their own goals and giving them that name. Why is it in every language? Saturn still remains Saturn. Why didn't they transliterate his name as well? This is the reason why, because Saturn is the one who is controlling them. He would not want his name to be changed, but the name of salvation was to be changed. My brethren, in the book of Romans 1 verse 20, it is written, for from the foundation of the world, the invisible things of Elohim are clearly seen and understood in the things he created, even his eternal power and divinity, so that they might be without excuse. They are the things that are created by Yahweh. That does not give us any excuse. We actually need to do is just to look at it and think, and then we will actually see the glory of Yahweh. But people become vain in their imagination and their unwise art was darkened, professionalizing the word that was meant for all. Now some need a, a theological degree to preach the gospel. Did Mark Luke add a degree in theology to preach the gospel? No. So why is it that they need a theology? degree it is to shut out the people because the gospel was meant for everyone not only a chosen few but for everyone who can hear it what a shame we read in romans 1 verse 22 and 23 it says professing to be wise these are the people these theologians they become foolish and they change the glory of the incorruptible Elohim into a likeliness of an image of a corruptible man and of birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. I want you all on this platform to close your eyes and I want you to look at the image that comes in when I mention the name JC, what image comes through? Do you, do you think this is the image that was written in, one, uh, in Romans 1 verse 22 and 23? Today we see image of men in some people's homes, churches, even some schools which are placed as object of worship. Could this be what is meant in Romans 1 verse 23? Changing the glory of incorruptible Elohim into a likeliness of an image of a corruptible man. Have you seen this happening? If you have, what are you doing about it? Are you going with the floor, bearing in mind worshiping? a likeliness of an image of corruptible men is idolatry. My brothers and sisters, let's not be fooled. Let's not be fooled. Let's, let's be uh, vigilant and uh, let us not allow any of these blaspheming names to be allowed within ourselves regardless of what if it is new people who are not understanding the word let it be our responsibility to teach those that do not know so that they are able to call the name of salvation 
We are not supposed to be found compromising our faith, accepting things that are not because we want to be politically correct. Let's not accept the things or people, dreamers who come in with their own names and we said we are supposed to give them time to understand when those very people knew the name of Yahweh and then changed to another. Are you aware if you associate with people that are doing things like that, that have started calling another name? The Bible in Romans 1 verse 20, uh, Romans 1 verse 32, it says, those people that are actually using these corruptible names, the corruptible image of man, they worship him. Romans says they deserve to die. Not only do they do it, but also those who associate with those that do them. Our association with someone that is calling another name, not with intention of learning, but he is thinking that he has been enlightened. Just like now, people are saying they have been enlightened. The original deity to worship is Lucifer. Can we still accept such a person in our midst? Because we think that Yahweh will give him time to repent. We must understand from the book of Romans that we have been reading, it is saying that we need to turn away from those things that we were practicing. And then we live under the law of the Messiah. That is the law of life. That is the law of love. And if people do not want to listen or to understand, people who want to live by their own ways, we know what we should do. We should dust our feet. This is the time of the end, which is a critical time where we should not spend time arguing about the gospel, arguing about names, arguing about genealogies. We are not supposed to do that. Arguing about words. Let me tell you, my brothers, you are not saved by knowing Hebraic words. You are not saved by knowing, having a good argument that you win. You are saved by love of Elohim, by following his commandment, which says you must love Elohim with all your heart and all your soul and your, all your mind. And you must love your neighbor as you love yourself. Loving Yahweh with all your heart and all your mind means that you will not even have a chance to bring anything that will be comparable to Yahweh. Meaning you cannot substitute Yahweh with an idol. You cannot substitute Yahweh with anything, even a cross. You cannot substitute Yahweh with that one. Yahweh is spirit. No one has ever seen Yahweh. So how can you try to compare him with things that are made by the hands of man? Let us be very careful, my brothers. Let us be very careful. Yes, one might say, I am not worshiping idols, but you associate with people who call funny names. And those people have told you point blank that this is where they are. I believe that is supposed to be your point of departure as a believer. If it is ignorance, stick around to teach them. But if they are not accepting to be taught, leave, let them be because it is written, my people are dying because of lack of knowledge. Not because they don't know, it's because they refuse knowledge they refuse it's not that they did not know uh -uh. they actually refuse knowledge 
That's why it is written, my people are dying because of lack of knowledge, because they refuse knowledge. Are you refusing knowledge? Hanging around with those that you know, those who claim that they are enlightened, and now they are calling another name. You should not, because the spirit of Yahweh is connected to his name. When you send a child, your child, to a neighbor and the child goes there and say, my father said this and that and that. The neighbor will know the father because he will know the son. But if a child, the neighbor does not know, and he goes to the neighbor and say, my father, the neighbor will ask, who is your father? Because what is important is the name to identify who the father is. Now I want to ask you on this platform, who is your father? Is your father and your savior interchangeable? Who you can call today, this one, tomorrow, that other one. If you do that, you are confused because you don't know your father. Yahshua said, my sheep knows my voice. Do you know your master's voice? Thank you, my brother. May Yahweh be with you. May you open your minds so that you can be set free because knowledge sets us free. Knowledge sets us free. That's why it is written that if we lack wisdom, we should ask and Yahweh 